Hello folks, Major Gosnell here, and today we're going to be taking another community spotlight look at Mason's base. He's very kindly agreed to show us around and show us the improvements he's made since the last video. So he's just going to uh, take us around here. We also have Drake here with us from Georgia, I believe. Hello. And yeah, yep. just going to scroll States. around. Uh, one thing before we start the video, unfortunately the FPS is remarkably low. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, just apologies in advance for anybody watching that. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, I'm Mason, and this is my base. We, I guess we'll start it up top here, because we probably won't be coming back to this point. Uh, here, through this window, is a pollutants tank, and that is for the entire base cooling. That cools the entire base. So those pollutants get pretty cold, and uh, they, they passively cool the whole base. Very nice. Uh, over over here, we have a backup generator system. We got our fuel generator on the right and coal generator on the left. This locker is full of coal. Nice. And then up top, we have solar panels on either side. I have 32 panels. And then this is hydroponics, but we will go through the other airlock for that. We'll show you the, the start of the base down below. Gotcha. So if we head back down these stairs here, Ready? Yeah, definitely an FPS hit. On the right of these stairs here, I have a little hidden gem away. There's actually a uranium vault in here. Oh, and nice. this is not really necessary. You don't really need lost uranium. <laughs> yep. But uh, I thought it would be a cool thing to do in case they ever add radiation to the game at some point. Sort of a sealed area. Oh, nice. Very nice. That's a good idea, actually. So... I love Just this. This is now. awesome. Um, these radiators here are to cool my furnace lines, if I'm uh, making anything in the furnace. It's kind of overkill, but uh, yeah. Um, this base was, I actually spawned near this crater, and I just took advantage of the crater and built my base into the side of it. I think what I'm going to do with this crater is actually have a, a lowered uh, hangar for a spaceship. And I'll have ground support equipment like tanks and things like that in the future. That would be awesome if they would have the shuttle. Or you could put like a sh spot for the shuttle if they, yep, exactly. when you get that back in. So uh, since my last video, um, this airlock has been completely redesigned. And we'll just cycle it while we're talking. Um, it goes into a tank now. And it has uh, four vents. And we got four suit storages. So if you guys would like to hang up your suits once this pressurizes. Oh, uh, yeah. You are more than welcome to. Second here. Yeah, no, I'll do that here. Let's see. So we repressurized almost? Yep, we're good now. Okay. We should momentarily. Oh, yeah, nice. And I'll be turning lights on and off as we go. So hopefully the frames don't drop too bad. Get nice suit um, squared away here. This really is right. the very nice design you've got here. That's a... So this was also redesigned. Um, each machine goes into a stagger and then goes into an inlet. And everything you make with these machines will come out in this uh, this little railed off area here. Oh, I see. So it kind of keeps it from. Yep. Around so, if it happens to... say you're making just pipes, it'll stack to 20 and then come out of here and you'll just have a, a bunch of stacks of 20 pipes instead of them rolling all over the floor. Oh, very nice. That's very cool. And this is the uh, the main switch for that. This will turn on all the manufacturing devices. Ah, uh, yes. Very nice. Also, you have I would like to mention the light up to talk to you. Oh, that is actually... Um, uh, a indicator for when the backup generator is on. So if I ever ah. fall at about 50% um, power, the backup generator system will kick on and put us back up to like 75. Oh, very nice. So you can see over here, I actually have my displays. We have 70% battery power, and uh, we're we're generating 32 kilowatts, and we're using 16 kilowatts. 16. That is pretty good. Which yeah. means it is daytime. And um, I think we showed this in the last video, but 
this here is actually the um this is the automated uh, furnace. I actually don't have any ores to smelt, unfortunately. I guess I could do silver. Sorry. <laughs> FPS. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, three FPS for me. <laughs> Very nice, though. Oh, this is cool. Get to see the... So yeah, if you can see the screens there, that's just telling you that it's smelting. And those will actually pop out of uh, this one here and stack those. I'm assuming you've got all your logic running on the walls behind here, do you? Uh, all the logic for this is actually in the furnace room itself. Oh, nice. Mm, okay. And it should be done there, and we should get a stack of about 50 silver plop out of here. Oh, there we go. Boom, there it goes. Nice. So, I think that's it for this room. I'm going to turn some lights off, and we will head down to the storage room here. This is also new. Oh. There we go. Oh, I'm stuck in the doorway. Oh. <laughs> All good? <laughs> so far, it's it definitely... Uh, Rolling slow, that's for sure. Um, so oh, wow, I like this. Room. This is cool. And we have a second fabricator here with shoots. Very nice. That leads up to the top, so I don't even have to come down here unless I store things. Over here, we have a recycler. It's a chute that sends stuff right to the recycler, and then we have chutes that just send stuff up, uh, up and down for manufacturing. Does this come out up at the top where you were talking about with the little enclosed? Uh, uh, nope, the this comes section down no? next to the fabricator and the recycler. Gotcha. There's okay. another chute system. Uh, next, we can step through here. Whoop. I lost my lights. I think that's one problem without having a helmet. <laughs> I say, I like the way that you used colors for just the color layout. It's uh, very nice there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I try uh, to co color coat most things. Um, this is also new. This is the med bay that is mostly completed oh, yeah. until they add more okay. medical parts. There you go. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I remember seeing that in the last video. That was neat. So this is the cryopods. Yep, they currently don't Actually. do anything, but I'm sure they will at some point. And then down here is the lowest part of the base. And... This will be used for future expansion. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It's either going to be a okay, radiation so. shelter, or a common area, or like maybe a research and development lab. Very really, yeah. I think the last time we were, I, when I saw this on the video that we saw before, it just, you didn't have any lights down here yet. So, nope, and you no didn't have the portable there. device either. So, uh, yep, that actually is. I don't need that at all anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, well. Portable stuff is good for when you're going places, so that would make sense. If you got your base all squared away, that you know it's really. So let's go check out um, the crew quarters, and we could actually go through that way, but I I kind of want to come back up this way so people don't get uh, disorientated. Walking around your base is a very oh, half life <laughs> feel from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep. <laughs> yeah, just waiting for the uh, gonna... headcraft to come out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna wait for bad guys to show up. I guess that'll that eventually would be, be fun. That would be interesting. Okay. Crowbar is yeah, at the ready. Yes. Can you guys see me? There we go. I am slowly turning around. Hold on. Crew quarters. Uh, oh, now this is nice. Oh, that is really nice. I like the fact you got your coolers behind the glass right here at the top of the stairs. That is actually thing. just for the sleeper system. That will heat and cool the sleeper lines to the desired mm -hmm. temp. And will filter out any CO2 or nitrogen from the lines. Oh wow, so it's pure oxygen when you're sleeping. Yep, it's as pure opposed oxygen. to nitrogen slash. Yep, it'll always be pure, pure oxygen there. 
So this is just the main common area. We got we have batteries and we have four suit storages. Uh, you need some of my coffee tables in there. Uh, yeah, I didn't have the patience to put the glass on those pipes like uh, like you had. Uh, here we have tank fills and waste tank evacuators just for convenience on the walls. And then each one of these rooms is a uh, guest room, guest room crew quarters. I has see. a sleeper that's all hooked up. They don't have their own suit storages, but you got them outside there. It has a locker and two chairs. Yeah, not too bad. That's and then we nice have see, got several. Yep, and then we have the master bedroom that also has a table and its own suit storage. Oh, Here on the wall, we have the, um, the pressure regulators for um, the suit storages as well as the sleeper. The sleeper system. Apologize, my phone went off. <laughs> oh, water, water. That didn't get in there. It's all right. Oh, that's cool. I like I like the fact. So you can be in here if you needed to. You can hit. You can actually have some control. So yeah, that's not too bad. So let's head up to atmospherics, which is through here. Go straight up. Oh yes, very. So this is atmospherics. Oh, you've added the large cylinders. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got the large ones now. Hey. Well, I did have them in the last video. You did? Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, you did, actually, yeah. I, but I think I was, I was focusing on the small ones, so I really wasn't paying attention to what was up at the top. I now put monitors above them. Like they, yeah, those are there. Like they have them before I put the large tanks up there. And you can see over here we have uh, the displays of the pressure, temperature, and the air composition. We have 71% nitrogen and 29% oxygen. Nice. And that is all, this is all automated, logic control um, for nitrogen and oxygen. And it's also pressure controlled as well. If the pressure gets too high, if it gets to 99, it should um, suck out the pressure until it's back down to about 98. Um, wow. Up here, if you see radiators, that is the cooling system. Very nice. Then we have tank fills on the wall. And through here we have the furnace room. Let's take a look. The furnace room is kept at vacuum. Um, oh, so I'm not going to be able to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have two suit storages in here in case you need to go in there. Oh, I don't that's think cool. we need to go in there at this, at this time. I, so did you make any changes in the furnace room from last time? From last uh, no, that's why I'm... That's why I think we don't really need to go in there. It's basically the same. I don't think I've made any major changes. But um, now we can actually go down to the access tunnel. And the access tunnel has changed quite a bit. I also notice your control center looked like it had um, had control displays and whatnot. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll look at that in probably a few minutes here. All right, I'm it's still trying to catch up to you guys. One sec. You got it yet? Boy, this is. Uh, I like where your placement of. You got so much stuff going on. It's like, ah, oh, man, how did you get all this stuff placed? Yeah. It's just it's amazing. A lot of effort and all the time. Yeah. Okay, oh, so yes. This is my favorite part of your uh, base. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the piping area. Yeah, this is just so awesome. <laughs> so we have heaters down here now. This is the, the main. Heat. This just heats the gases. And it, the, that's one thing about heating and cooling your base. If you have your gases at the right temperature, you really don't need to worry about it as much. Yeah, that would make sense because then you won't ever, I mean, if, if your gases are heated properly, then the rest of the base is going to stay nice and smooth. Yep. So these heaters will actually just turn on um, to keep it between 20 and 21 degrees. Um, the coolers will kick on if it hits like 22 or so. This pressure regulator will turn on and take cold from outside and put it through the neutral line of the base. Um, over here, this is actually underneath the new airlock. And this is all new. So if we come down this way, you can see a bunch of the other systems. Oh yeah, definitely got it. God, uh, this was taking your edges, Oh, man. Yeah. Just uh, saying, I'm just trying to get past the, 
Back here. There you go. Trying to get past the, uh, there we go. Whoa. There we go. It's like ice skating. Yeah, yeah, or worse. I don't know. I have been ice skating in a long time, so I don't know how well I would do. <laughs> So here you can oh, see wow, some pumps cool. and some pipes, and um, these are for a filtration system. Um, that blue line there will suck up any air and fill a tank up above, uh, and then once that pressure gets too high, it'll actually expel the pressure. So it's kind of just like a back and forth. It sucks in air, filters it out, then pushes it back out. Um, and, and then these two pumps here are actually for the CO2 scrubbing airlock, these ones that are off. I just I heard a kick just then, so or something. Yep. So on. now, so now the tank has gotten to the desired pressure. So now it's going to release some of the pressure. That's wow. Really <laughs> okay, I'm still ice skating here by the pipes and the chutes. So I guess the next thing to show you is probably. The Sorry, just waiting on that drink there now. This yeah, like uh, now I'm on the wall. There we go. No, <laughs> yeah, it definitely has got some uh, got some upgrading to do. <laughs> My base is nothing like this. It's so getting, you do it's take the FPS hit. That's one thing about large bases. Yeah. Love the pipes. It's uh, not love as the bad pipe system. In single player, I don't think. Okay, I think I'm past the door. Yep. Okay, so let's go back down to probably crew quarters here. It's probably the fastest way. You guys can see me. Go to the blue area. I believe this was, is this your control uh, area up here or no? Um, yeah, we will look at the control room and the battery room next up here. Okay. I thought I recognized the blue from the, uh, the previous checkout. So we're back. Uh, there we go. I just got up the stairs. <laughs> okay. So up here is the battery room, and this has been recently yeah, expanded. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, much bigger than what before. We now have 18 batteries in here, and we still have 10 batteries in hydroponics, so we have a total of 28 batteries. So I'm guessing because everything is nice and charged up in here. Uh, when it comes to your charge levels, you have uh, with the 32 solar panels up above, you pretty much can get these things back to back to operational status, like snap your fingers during daylight. Uh, yeah, they usually fully charge during the day, um, and if not, I have the backup generator, and the backup generator system will probably never run out of gas because I have I think five megapascals of uh, gas mixture it's using. Wow. Um, that is impressive. All right, let's see. I am uh, slowly working my way back down. All right. So through here is the control room. Oh, you're lagging up. Yeah. Horrible. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So this will be expanded as new systems are added. I'll have more controls in here. And so probably when they add security systems is when I'll have a bunch of monitors, things like that. Oh. But here so, yeah. we can control the nitrogen in the base, the oxygen, the temperature, and the pressure. And hopefully nice. this doesn't cause too many issues, but I can also turn on the lights of atmospherics down there. Uh, shockingly enough, my FPS never changes. It's always three. <laughs> I've never had it go up or had, down. I think you've hit the lower limit. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, so up here, you, I, before you had, to, you were going to decide whether or not you needed to. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to run into you there. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> yeah. So now that you have this up here, are you planning on putting more uh, displays with more additional stuff as well, not just atmospherics, or are you going to kind of? You did mention uh, yeah, some problem. Eventually, probably. So this way you could have a power uh, control and 
not just atmospherics. You got atmospherics obviously on the one side that's facing the atmospherics room, so that makes sense. That's pretty cool. Like yeah, we'll this. have security systems and security screens and maybe some other monitors as well. So nice. next is hydroponics, I believe. to pass by me here. Okay, over here. Okay, so if we uh, can all fit in here. If I can get in here, yep. I think I'm in. Just close this uh, door and it'll allow us to open this door. I love you can the... notice the temperature is higher. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I noticed that there's... The lighting in here, uh, I'm actually uh, looking at phosphorescence on my screen at this point, in this room only. The other rooms seem to be okay, it's almost like maybe there is extra light or something, maybe because it's warmer in the room? Uh, it's because everything is white as well. I mean, yeah, it could be. It could be. The only time I notice it is, uh, is like literally the middle of the room over to where the atmospherics are sitting. Uh, so, for me. So not much has changed in hydroponics. Um, we are at low CO2 right now and high oxygen simply because we've been growing plants for a while. The system will correct that over time. Um, but up here we have the control room for hydroponics. I love this. I love the control rooms. Um, the, hanging, the hanging control room is just way cool. Yep, it was, I, I thought it was a pretty good idea. And what do we have going on here? Oh, we have chickens growing. This is actually new. This is a hatchery, and you'll have to be careful when going through these doors. These go these doors will lock behind you just so the chickens don't escape. So once you open it, you kind of have to go through right away. Pretty quick. <laughs> well, this should be interesting. Okay, I made it in. It, it wow, there's actually... On your FPS. Uh, cool, check out the chicks. Now, the chickens work off your hunger rate, so currently... Just for the sake of the video, I have the hunger rate set to zero. So the chickens so won't die chickens. at this point. Yeah. They're like halfway. You point, at least, I, yeah, you point, point your cursor at them and they show half. Does that we mean have a growth? Shoot here. That? No, that's, um, that's their health. Oh, if you okay. feed them, their health will go back up. Um, I see. But if it reaches zero, they'll die. Now, if, if you guys don't know how chickens work, they'll lay a few eggs, and then every now and then they'll lay a brown fertilized egg. And why don't we have the lights on? There's lights for here. Here we go. Um, yeah, event eventually they'll lay a brown fertilized egg, and if you have a fertilized egg on the ground in the right conditions, it'll hatch into a chick, and then the, after a few minutes, that uh, chick will turn into a chicken. Nice. Plenty of eggs hanging around already, too. Oh, yeah, um, I had, the first time I ever tried chickens, uh, I didn't know that they worked off your hunger rate, so it was at zero. So I just laid a chicken down, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Went to do something else, and I probably had, like, 15 chickens in here all laying eggs, because they wouldn't have. <laughs> so it oh, got goodness. a little out of control pretty quickly oh, before. I noticed the door didn't close behind one of us. It's closed on my screen. It could just be a sync thing. I think, I'm yeah, turn I think we're out of sync. Just so that they will not live forever. Look, I'm actually walked out the door. At least on my screen. Now the door closed. Now it opened. Yeah, am I outside or am I inside? <laughs> That'd be my question. You are on my screen, you're outside. Yeah, I literally walked through an open door. Uh, it must have been open. So, so here we have main hydroponics area. We've got about a hundred trays going right now and along the outside it's all soybean. In the middle here is potatoes. Wow. I'm actually going to eat some fries at the moment because my hunger is at 15%. I think I'm good for now. So, so Seeing so I'm new to the whole farming business, uh, if you put ferns, if you get, do you have you ever done anything with the ferns to actually help with oxygen? Ferns are really just meant for if you need oxygen. They don't really give you anything else right now. Okay, so it would be advisable to do. 
potatoes, soybeans, something yeah, that's going to give you I food. would do a little bit of wheat just to grow your wheat supply, um, and then probably a little bit of corn, and then but mostly soybean and potatoes because those when you make baked potatoes or fries, they are giving you the the highest calorie high. usage. Right, right. Very, very that's nice. very good because I mean, wow, I, uh, my potatoes t did not turn out this tall. <laughs> they didn't grow, and I'm guessing once they grow and you let them grow, they'll they'll get taller and taller as you go as well. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So we could also visit the um, the access tunnel of hydroponics, but I don't think anything has changed there since the last video. So that is completely up to you guys. And to be honest, probably best for the edit purposes just to keep it. Yeah, yeah. it's nothing <laughs> changed. No point. I didn't right. uh, leave my suit pack on anyway, so. That would be... Well, there are actually up here, actually. True, actually, yeah. It's all right. I'll, as long as we're no, not... Are we, we going to go back outside? Um, yeah, there's nothing new in there. Everything else is essentially the same. Oh, I got to say, you've made a lot of nice improvements. Very nice. I love this. Uh, in fact, um, when I, I saw the, when I saw the first video to check it out, I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely want to make this this size of a hydroponics. But I'm guessing I probably won't want to start off this big really early. Um, did you do that, um, or did you? No, I started off this big real early, but I did make a few mistakes that inspired redesigns. So I would say start small. Don't be like me. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then learn learn how everything works and then scale up to a bigger system when you're comfortable gotcha so yeah i think what i decided to do was is off of the base i have i was going to come up with a room this big but then i was going to cordon it off and make it smaller start off i think then what i'll probably do is start off with you know two or three uh frame sizes and then put it all together get it going and then expand it as it starts to go and starts to work better so that like that yep. is that works out nice. Have you just been running around with the crowbar this whole time, Cosmo? Oh, uh, he was afraid of the. When he talks about the half life, he's, he's uh, ready to ready to hit anything that comes near you. He also has his tape in his hand, and he left his pack on so he can carry. It. Well, the pack on I can understand. You want jetpack yeah. at all times. Well, listen, pockets. serial killer duct tape, crowbar, <laughs> do the matter. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh, that would work. Oh, also, potatoes you can now harvest three times, apparently, on beta. Oh, okay. So they're actually three getting potatoes. more out of them, then. Yep. Very nice. Is there an upper limit on... Uh, so I'd say I that's probably about it. Uh, to show you guys, that is a full base tour. I was going to ask, so is there an upper limit on the height of the plants? Yeah, that's what I was uh, curious about. Yes, they're currently at full growth. Ah, uh, okay. okay, okay. I was having ideas of making like a gigantic uh, tower of yeah. forest. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be cool, actually. Actually, what would be really nice if, to see, I was thinking that uh, in one of my imaginative moments, I thought, oh, it would be really cool to have this huge greenhouse slash foresty park-like area in the base that you could have trees growing and... Um, you know, other things. So you could walk through it and actually have the same effect as this, but and this is pretty amazing. It really is. So that's pretty much everything you had to show us. Yep. Uh, yep, that's it. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to wrap up the video here anyway. But uh, thanks for showing us around. This is, uh, yeah. once again, you have impressed everybody, I think. <laughs> I think so, yeah, definitely. I can see a lot of uh, imp people improving and trying to compete with this. Just uh, I'd, like, I'd like to mention that this, if this wasn't mentioned already, uh, this is available on the workshop. So if you guys want to, we want to yep. put a link to that. I'll put uh, down the uh, video description. So yep. people can actually download this, and they, if yes. you'd like to, you can tear everything apart, learn how it works, learn how I did things. You can ask me any questions. I'll be more than more than glad to answer them. Very nice. Very very nice. Yeah, and definitely definitely, I would recommend everybody checking it out. Um, because it's it's worth the the uh, education level of checking it out. So excellent. Well, thanks for the showing us around, Mason. 
So, um, Mason realized he forgot to show us something, so I'm just checking this little bit in at the end of the video here, if you're a little extra for everybody. So, what is it, Mason? Okay, so this is the CO2 scrubbing airlock. We didn't go through this direction before, but I'll show you how this works. So, we just close the door behind us, and then if you can just step to your right a little bit, um, we just toggle this console, and you'll see below it says 91%. That is the progress of the CO2 scrubbing. So if we just turn that on, it will turn on two active vents and two volume pumps that scrubs this airlock clean of CO2. And once it reaches 99.9% .9 uh, progress, it will unlock this door and we can turn the console off. So it looks like it's at 99.4. So, as you can see, the pressure never dropped. It's actually increasing at the moment. But once it hits 99.9 .9 here, there we go, it is now unlocked. Oh, very nice. So you never have any CO2 entering the base? Yep. The, well, very, very little amount. So that all works through behind this glass, through that tank. These two filtration units will um, are attached to these two active vents on the ceiling of the airlock, and those will suck up all of the CO2, and then it'll filter out the CO2, volatiles and pollutants, and send them back to hydroponics. Um, and it will store the nitrogen and oxygen in that tank. And then these two packs of vents, simultaneously, will push that nitrogen and oxygen back into the airlock at this nearly the same rate. Very so nice. that's why the pressure never drops. And you can see, if you look at this monitor, the pressure is actually going down right now. It will fluctuate between 4,000 uh, or 4,000 kPa and 4,200 kPa, I believe. Very, very and that's nice. just uh, used for filtration. It will filter out um, the CO2 in the base, and it kind of just cycles back and forth between those values. But yeah, that was it. I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that, because I thought it was a neat little... A little trick. thing. It wasn't your traditional airlock. You could go through that without a spacesuit if you wanted to. That is very, very nice. Well, thanks for showing us that as well. I'll probably put this on the end of the video. And yeah, thanks very much.